Right, while U.S. companies uh, find themselves being targeted by foreign governments, the U.S. government is targeting Chinese companies. Specifically, momentum gaining against TikTok as the House committee, House committee unanimously voted to approve a bill that could lead to the platform being banned in the United States. Lawmakers argue the bill is more of a national security measure against TikTok's owner ByteDance and less uh, really uh, to any threat posed by TikTok itself. Let's bring in Danny Savalos, NBC News and MSNBC legal analyst, and Andrew Selipak, social media professor at the University of Florida. Professor, let me begin with you to sort of describe what, what the sensitivity is to TikTok and ByteDance, its parent. Well, there's a couple of different issues that are going on. The first is from a data security perspective, and that's one of the big issues that we're hearing about. And it's how the Chinese government could, in essence, get access to the 170 million American users who are on TikTok, their data, and use that data for various, potentially nefarious purposes, including spying on journalists, spying on politicians, depending on who's using it. The other big and significant issue is how the Chinese government could essentially manipulate the algorithm and provide different content to an American audience or a foreign audience, as opposed to the content that the Chinese audience sees. So we know, for example, that in China, young people are seeing content that encourages them to be engineers, doctors, good citizens, whereas here in the United States, the content is much more about uh, having young people create provocative dances or having a lot more sort of dissensus when it comes to our political system. So we know that there's two significant issues from those two perspectives that Congress is sort of very worried about, and justifiably so. Danny, you know, banning TikTok would make a lot of parenting decisions very easy. <laughs> uh, but, but that aside, obviously there are significant free speech issues here. There are censorship issues here. Walk us through a couple of those items that ought to be of concern. Well, the First Amendment is certainly implicated, but how? Uh, on the one hand, a foreign company doesn't necessarily have First Amendment rights here in the U.S., but the rights that may be implicated are the rights of those 170 million users in the United States. They may have not only a right to speak on the platform, but also the Supreme Court has said that uh, people have a right to receive information as well as part of the First Amendment, and that can include a right to receive that information from abroad. One major case in the Supreme Court many years ago uh, involved a situation where Americans had a right to receive communist literature from other countries in the mail. So there is this First Amendment right. It is implicated, but the First Amendment is not absolute. This is only stage one. Stage two would be deciding whether or not the government, their interest is substantially related to this legislative fix. In other words, the government has to have a really good reason to infringe upon First Amendment rights. And their reason would arguably be that they are protecting the United States from foreign governments. Andrew, earlier on in, in sort of the, the beginning answer, you were talking about collecting data from journalists or from politicians and that, that the worry is it would be used in nefarious ways. But didn't President Biden just recently join TikTok as part of his election campaign? I mean, what kind of data would be gathered and used in potentially harmful ways? And why in the world did Biden sign up for TikTok then? Well, uh, there's two questions there. And I think probably the more significant one is why did he suddenly sign up for TikTok? And I think that is an obvious answer, and that's to reach a younger audience. Um, you can look at all the polling data that indicates that his numbers with younger audiences has been hurting. Um, and, and one of the, along those same lines, one of the issues that I don't think has necessarily received a lot of attention is the fact that a lot of the younger people who are upset with him have been upset because of his response to what's going on in Gaza. And we know from research, we know from a lot of discussions that are going on online, that a lot of the discussions about what's going on in Gaza has been on TikTok. So if we look at it from that perspective, yes, he's trying to reach younger voters on the platform, one. And two, uh, one of the reasons why potentially the Biden administration might be behind and, and might be supporting this legislation and a lot of members of Congress is because of the content that is actually being produced on there and how it's creating a negative reaction for them in the upcoming election. As for the data, which is, you know, again, a significant issue, we also have to keep in mind that all apps, all websites sell data and mm -hmm. it's accessible to our government, any government, 
uh, any company that wants to purchase it, including the Chinese government. But what I think a lot more of this concern kind of comes from is what data is TikTok specifically collecting that might be different than data that, say, Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat is collecting, and then how they're using that data to see maybe who journalists are contacting Hong Kong, mainland China, or around the world.